goes to the pot. The return, which goes to the other end of the pot, is your negative. It's labeled zero volts. And then the wiper of the pot comes in pin 12, and that's when you turn the pot, you're going to pick off some voltage between zero and five. This is how you set the overall level of regen that's available. Then you set a percentage of that using variables in the software um, for the accelerator and for the brake. So that's how we're going to approach that. Pin 14 is a 5 volt output uh, for the throttle and pin 28 is the return for the throttle. We're not going to use either one of them. Actually our DME provides a return and a 5 volt to the throttle and um, so we're going to pick off uh, and we already have on our DME plug um, uh, the, the voltage that comes out of the throttle and put it on pin 42. Um, why will this work? The uh, 5 volts comes, of course, from our 12 volt system. Um, and our 12 volt system is all chassis ground. We have connected a ground uh, return from the Thames to our true vehicle ground and likewise the DME is grounded and so that should be a very common 5 volts uh, no matter where it comes from and we get to adjust what happens based on the voltage coming in anyway in software and so we really only need the um, um, output of the accelerator in pin 42 and we don't really need to hook up the 5 volts or the return at all. At the top on the right of this uh, diagram you'll see pin 7, 34, 8, and 20 and a pin 16. Pin 16 is basically um, our 12 volt system out and in theory you would have a switch in the car to select between drive, economy, a reverse, and parking. Um, we're not going to have that selector. We've got a manual transmission anyway. Um, however, I'm going to loop pin 16 to pin 7 for drive. Um, I'm, I've got uh, some reservations about this. We may later, either as a function of our instrument system, uh, our battery management, uh, use that economy version. That's kind of, you can set that up in software where that's kind of a limp mode that would let us define a uh, low power drive mode. Um, we could use that as a valet switch on the dash. You switch that and they can only go 15 miles an hour. Uh, or we could use it with uh, some of our instrumentation that if we get to a certain battery uh, state of charge that we would switch to economy. Pin 18 is in PWM power limit. I don't know. It's pulse width modulated signal that you can use as an input voltage to determine the amount of power limit. Uh, we have a, uh, also on the left side, pin 27, 13, and 14, 41, we could hook up a pot to vary the maximum power of the um, uh, drivetrain. We want the maximum and we'll deal with that instead of setting a maximum power limit. We'll deal with it uh, with our throttle adjustments. So we're not interested in a voltage control power limit either. Pins 9 through 31 um, here on the right side are really enable, disable uh, uh, pins. Uh, 9, 5, 35, 37 are just general disable pins. If you put 12 volts on one of them, you disable the controller. Um, pin 21 is a specific disable and that's labeled AC net connected. We have a output of our charger that we send to our eVision um, that is simply a 14 volt output from the charger saying that it's charging. We're going to connect that to pin 21 and so when you have the AC plug connected to the uh, uh, Brusa charger um, that would uh, in theory prevent the uh, you getting in the car and driving away uh, because the controller will be disabled. Um, 
pin 22 is an alarm reset. I really don't have any idea. Um, the pin 10 we will need to connect, and we need to connect it to 12 volts, and that's our regen enable. Recall I said we were going to put a switch on the dash to disconnect the regen. Uh, that switch will normally provide 12 volts to pin 10 to enable regen. If I set it to off, we break that, and that will disable regenerative braking only. Um, pin 6 is brake contact. We're going to use our brake light signal from our DME to connect to that to indicate that we uh, have pressure on the brake and that will bump the amount of regen. Uh, pin 19 is an emergency. Um, you could, could have a, uh, an emergency shutoff switch uh, that not only broke a circuit breaker but also uh, shut down the... Uh, um, controller. We're not going to use it actually. Pin 33 is traction enable. You have to have that on uh, to be able to drive. We're just going to wire that to 12 volts. Uh, actually, we're going to wire that. Uh, well, we're going to wire that to 12 volts. Um, the next pin, pin 31, is key, and that we again from the DME stole the signal that comes on 12 volts when you press the start button, and. Um, and shuts off immediately when you press the start button again. Um, what, what's this going to do? Uh, the other signals that we have for start have a five minute delay when you shut them down. We don't want a five minute delay. If you press that start stop button while you're going down the road, you're going to disable this controller and that's exactly how I want it to work. Um, pin 15 is our 12 volt. Um, we have a couple of pins on the edge of the thing that are larger value. We did used a, a 16 gauge, I think, wire for the 12 volts. So it doesn't use much power, but a little bit of current. And similarly, pin two is um, our ground that we literally tie to ground here. So that's some of the signals available and the ones we we're using and why. But you're going to have to spend some time on any controller that you get, a DC controller, an AC controller, going through these control signals and software settings that are available. Um, we did recently receive a controller from a guy who wanted us to put it on TV. Um, I asked him a couple questions about programming the throttle levels and so forth, and he assured me that if I sent it back, they could do that for me. That, that dog doesn't hunt. These cars are too variable. We change things all the time, uh, and you need to be able to change them to set the feel of the car. And it takes quite a bit of testing and work once you have the car rolling to get it to feel right. And this kind of ergonomics is very important. It's part of what Toyota and Ford and a number of um, car manufacturers are struggling with now, and again, typically uh, drive-by-wire situations with electronic throttles, that you have to trim that up where it feels like driving a car and like most people's perception of driving a car, which of course varies depending on what cars they've been driving. So it's more uh, art than science. Um, so you have to sit down and go through this and develop a strategy of what inputs you have available, what additional things you might want to do to the car to add inputs to take advantages of features in your controller, and then how those interact, those signals, with software configuration items um, in the uh, uh, configuration software that comes with the controller. And almost all of them have some configuration software in an RS-232 port at this point. We've actually bought little mini laptops so they're easier to set on the car. Kind of hard to read, but um, you can do that. And that is part of the process. I went through the diagram, the book, read about the variables, picked out the signals I wanted and made myself a list of exactly what pins and what it was. And I'm using that to wire up this control plug. And I'm, I'm very nearly finished. I wish there was an easy magic way of doing this. But that's the signals I've selected so far. And we may change them. Uh, we may go back and, and in, indeed uh, 
use something like the um, economy mode or the 